these are places that interest me that I find beautiful and and usually it's a combination of, of light and, and an activity that's taking place there and, and that dialogue is something that I find really interesting and that I try to, to explore. Uh, and I'm interested often with the role of technology in our lives, televisions, but also computers and now increasingly cell phones. How much mediation in our day-to-day -day experience uh, is occurring. And you, you, we go and attend events and it's almost more important to record the event than to actually experience it. Art is an important way for us to hold a mirror back to ourselves and question what are the things that we're gaining and what are the things that we're losing. In the, in the 19th century, you saw French painters obsessively painting trains and train stations because rail travel was fundamentally altering the, the rhythms of life in France. And I think here we have this role that technology is playing in our lives, fundamentally altering the rhythms of our lives, the, how we interact person to person. And so a lot of my work examines the role of technology in, in that way. And so, for example, the Tokyo Stock Exchange, it's a place that I knew from the Gursky and the Bill Klein photographs, where there's this sea of people, traders with black hair, black suits, white shirts, moving around in a sea of activity. And I went there, and all of a sudden, it's, it's a, now a glass cylinder enclosing you know, 15 computers and six people. I mean, it looked, to me, it looked like the Dharma Initiative in Lost. I suddenly stumbled through and found this you know, very sterile, computer-controlled environment with only a handful of people monitoring activity that has impacts far-reaching. I mean, certainly some of the images, uh, you know, the picture right over my shoulder of the, the robot bar are experiences that I'd never experienced anywhere else. And, and that's something that, that happens often in Tokyo. You're, you're, you encounter things that at first leave you totally puzzled. And then once you get over that initial befuddlement, um, you can find great joy. I think it's a, a city that a lot of foreigners were have been afraid to go visit for many years and recently I think people are discovering it to be one of the great tourism cities in the world and part of that is I think there is a renewed energy after the the, the, the lost decade and the sort of stagnation that, that Japan was experiencing in the last few years there is this renewal that's been happening that's, that makes it I think a really interesting place to be right now. But what I has drawn me to black and white over, over the years is this ability of bringing different light sources and creating a unified whole. In a, example, the, the mirrored entrance, you actually have all these different light sources combining all the different elements from the different stores coming together. But in black and white, you can sort of bring it, bring it together and tie it into a unified visual experience. With color, you have different light sources will cast different hues and, and so the pictures become more chaotic in a way and in many cases in Tokyo that was something that, that interested me was sort of actually pulling the pictures apart and having them be chaotic as opposed to being tied together. In a case like Cup Noodles it was just the, the pop culture beauty of these all these packages it was not something that would have translated as beautifully to, to black and white. It reminds me of some, there's obviously the nude descending a staircase or there's some Italian modernist paintings. I love that idea of reflection. A lot of my photographs have dealt with mirrors and reflective surfaces. Uh, and I love how it's in a way a, a parable of, of what photography is in, in, in that just by changing your point of view, you're seeing a different angle of the world and so reflection is this within a photograph is the same world but shown to you in a different way which again ties into that core of what I'm really interested in which is looking at the world and yet seeing it differently and I think that uh, this is obviously the most sort of explosive of that um, in, in, in that these shards of what look like shards of glass reflecting the world you're seeing the same scene from many different vantage points. A classic example of that was the Tiananmen tank and the, the man, there were several different photographs made of that exact moment, but somehow the one vantage point is the one that became iconic. One of the things that I'm most interested in is, is using photography to find something surprising in, in the everyday and, and things that we're familiar with. And in making a photograph of a dinosaur skeleton, there's a way in which you can bring it to life 
that's very different than you could with any other medium because obviously in film you would see that, that it's a skeleton and that it's static. But in a photograph, we've learned how to read movement in a photograph and I can use that to create the illusion of movement in, in those, those animals. And so suddenly the parade of, of animals in the gallery of evolution or in the comparative anatomy, the animals can seemingly come to life. We're familiar with how short exposures can reveal the world to us in ways that we haven't seen. Uh, people didn't know how a horse galloped until Moybridge took the stop-motion photographs. And you see paintings of horses and the movement of the legs is completely wrong. By using a longer exposure, I'm hoping to achieve a similar effect. And so it's, it's, you know it's real, it's familiar, but yet you're seeing it in a way that only a photograph could reveal it to us. So if you're looking at the crowd in front of the Mona Lisa, we've, we've been there, we know what the kind of that scene is, but in the photograph, suddenly it's, it's shown to us in a, in a different, more surprising way. I didn't set out to make my, my figures look ghostly. I first started using the long exposures when I was making the photographs of my friends watching their favorite TV shows, and the sort of their appearance came as initially a little bit as a surprise to me, but I found it very fascinating, this record of the time that we spend. A lot of photography was, is about asserting a human presence, like I am here, I existed, uh, and, and I think it's interesting to use a photograph to sort of reflect back on the fleeting nature of our, of our time. And uh, certainly something, I'm not overly preoccupied with my own mortality, but it, I think it's, it's, it is interesting to sort of question that and then to question what it is, that, how it is that we spend our time and, and our, to sort of capture that sense of, of movement, the chaos. When I photographed the rush hour at Grand Central, I expected to get the Salgado Church Station photograph, which is one of my favorite photographs. And when I first process the negatives and the train station looks empty, there's a dozen people at most that show up, I thought, what a failure, I have to go back and do a shorter exposure. But in the end, I found it fascinating that the thousands of people moving through Grand Central at rush hour disappear. And, and what you're left with are the few people that stop to check their cell phones, to look at the train schedule, to do these things. And, and I think that there's something really fascinating with that. And it goes back to the very earliest photographs. You have the picture of the Boulevard du Temple where the street looks completely empty except for the man who stops and is having his shoe polished. I think that idea of all this activity, what, what remains of it, it's using something that's unique to photography. It's the only medium that can capture a given period of time in a single image. And so using that to, and playing around with the length of my exposures, which now go from a few seconds on the shortest scale to half hour, 45 minutes, uh, allows me to look at the world in a way that I find unique to photography. And that's fundamentally something that I find fascinating.